Hi guys, my name is Ember Strife, and some of you have been asking for a setup video and wanting to know what kind of computer I have and stuff like that, so I decided to do a computer setup slash video editing video. <laughs> uh, so I'll show you my peripherals and I'll also show you what I use to record and what I do to edit and stuff like that. So here's my computer. The case is a Antec Landboy Air. It's a modular case and I love it. The two the two fans on the front uh, can change position. These are slots for CD writers, DVD drives, stuff like that. Um, and they can change places with the fans. You can have them in the middle, top, bottom, whatever you want. Um, and also the hard drives on the side, they can change places too. They can be long ways like they are now or they can be sideways like this. It just depends on how you want your wiring and your cable set up. Uh, I like it like this since I view the other side where all the cables are on this side. And I'll open all this up so that you, can, you guys can see the inside better. Um, it can run up to 15 fans. Right now I have five. I have two on the front, two on the side, and one back there in the back. Um, but you can put two more here, two more here, and then three on each of the, each of the doors. Uh, for peripherals, the keyboard is a Razer Black Widow Ultimate, uh, and I think there's also a Black Widow Stealth that has quieter key sounds, but you can hear, this is why my, <laughs> you can hear my keyboard in my videos all the time. I also have a Razer Lachesis, I think is how you say it, for a mouse, uh, and I have the, uh, the Diablo 3 headset from SteelSeries. Basically what it is, it's a SteelSeries V2, kind of modified. It is a, a USB mouse, as you can see here. And that should be it for peripherals. And I'm going to open up the computer so you can see and tell you about those things. So I've opened up my computer so you guys can see the inner workings better. And this is what it looks like. So the sides here come off and the two doors open and come off. Uh, I guess we'll start with the CPU and I'll just go over the specs with you guys. The CPU is an Intel i5-2500K Sandy Bridge Quad Core CPU. The graphics card is an NVIDIA GTX 560 Ti. For those of you who care about the motherboard, it is uh, a P67A G43 from MSI. The RAM, which is right here next to the CPU, is Patriot G Series Sector 5, and that's two sticks with four gigabytes, so I have eight gigs of RAM running. The power supply is a Corsair 650 watt. Oh, hey, there it is. Uh, it's a Corsair 650 watt. I think it's a little bit less than most people would use for this, but uh, it's fine. Uh, as for my hard drives, uh, the bottom three here are all two terabyte each. So I have six terabytes of storage so far. <laughs> and this baby one up here, which is actually my my OS drive, it's only 100 gigs. I don't know, I need to get that changed over. But because it has my OS on it, it's hard to like not use my computer for a day and do that. So that is what all is in my computer. And I will be back with you guys talking about um, what I use to record and how I edit. So now that you guys have seen what the machine is made up of, I'm going to show you what goes on on the machine. This is Fraps here. This is what I use to record all of my footage. There are other programs out there, but I just, even though Fraps makes files that take up a lot of space on your computer, I just prefer it. I would rather have bigger files and better quality than anything else, and I think uh, in general Fraps gives that to you. So the general settings doesn't really matter much. It doesn't really up to you what you want to turn on and off except for this um, monitor arrow desktop that's what you need to click to record your desktop like I'm doing right now FES I don't really use benchmarks or anything so I can't tell you much about that uh, also screenshots not really steam takes my screenshots for me so I don't really mess with that either movies is where it is you can pick whatever folder you want to put your your videos in uh, you need to set your capture hotkey. Mine's F9. Uh, I record at 30 FPS. Um, I could record at 60. I may start doing 60 now that I'm doing less material. I'll have more space for, you know, higher frame rate. So I might start doing that. And I do record at full size. 
and th these are this is just my settings. I record with Windows 7 sound on so I can record Skype or whatever. Um, in stereo, I think multi-channel does some weird stuff. I don't know. Uh, if you're using a mic, you want to be sure you do record external input unless you're using some other some other program to record your voice like Audacity. Audacity is really good. I like to show my mouse cursor so that people, if I want to point to something in a video, you guys can see my cursor. Uh, lock frame rate, whatever. Force. Yeah, whatever. Th those are my FRAP settings. And I was just about to start editing a video, so I thought I would go through and show you guys what, uh, what happens in Sony Vegas. That's what I use to record. I'm using Vegas Pro 10, as you can see. This icon right here will bring up your project properties. These are mine. I always record at 16 by 900. Um, because my resolution is a 16 by 10, YouTube takes only 16 by 9 videos. Uh, if it's not 16 by 9, I will put black bars on there. Frame rate, anywhere close to 30. I think this was just the default. 8 big pixels, uh, best full resolution rendering quality, Gaussian motion blur type, some random folder to put pre-rendered files in, whatever. Audio, I have the sample rate at 44,100. 24 bit that best resample and stretch. Uh, and I'm not sure what these other ones do, but that is my project settings. So as the type of video I'm working with. So now to start editing, you just put whatever in. I think I'm, I'm gonna edit a Mist of Pandaria video. So, search through all this. I can't even remember where I left off last time. Oh, I just died here. Okay. I just select all this and put it in the project, and the project list will be right here. Just as far as interface goes, I like to mess with my project files here. This is the preview window, so let's go ahead and just drag all this crap in the, in the timeline. We're not going to use all this, obviously. <laughs> I'm not going to have an hour-long video. Here's your preview pane. You can make this as big, as wide, however however you want it. But I do like to see the files, the preview, and the volume. Volume is very important. I think a lot of times volume will determine the quality of your video, kind of. I think what makes a good video is a decent sound decibel level and also, of course, video quality. Anyways, what I do is I just... I start at the very beginning. I start editing. I move the sound up to about 9. 9.8 for this one. Usually it's 7.7. .7. That's just so that you can hear my voice at in between a 15 and 3 decibel level or whatever whatever these numbers are. I keep it in between 15 and 3 for my voice. I try to. And then I try to get the game sounds a little bit lower. But that is my standard for sound. You don't ever want to go above 0 when these letters... Um, Let's see if I can find a spike, like this right here. I'm going to mute this for you so that you don't hear it, but if you watch up here, those letters will turn red, probably. Yeah, so you don't want anything above zero, and if it is above zero, this little meter will tell you and tell you how much. And then to do that, I click on the audio track, press Shift-V to enter this little blue line. And what this blue line does is change the volume. And this is how I change the high parts of my videos. Like if I, if I laugh really loud or I scream or I'm raging or something, uh, I always adjust the volume here. So if you, if you move this down, then you can get it to a pretty decent audible level. Like I, I never let anything give a, get above 2. So 3.5 is fine. So basically what I do after that, I pick a starting point or whatever, I go through, I make sure the volume is okay, I cut out stuff that, that I don't want in the video, like if I'm taking a long time to vendor something, or if I'm looking through talents, or all the boring stuff you guys don't want to see, I'll edit that stuff out. There are many different transitions you can use, uh, say if I wanted to cut out this entire clip, and I wanted, I'm going to have to drag this over. There are a lot of transitions you can put in here, and when I first started YouTube, I was doing Dead Island... I think it was the Dead Island walkthroughs. Uh, I would do fancy transitions. I think I did... I can't even remember what I was using. 3D Shuffle is what I was using. So it would be like this right here. That would be the transition. What I do is I just... 
I just overlap. Overlap does like a crossfade transition. Um, I keep it about, I don't know, if it's a big change, I'll do a second overlay. But for most just blending clips together, when I cut a little something out, I keep it about 15 to 20. Crossfade like that, and that's how I do my transitions for my end slate. Um, the end slate is the credits where the music's roll and everything. What I do for that, let's say this is all I want for the video everything that's in front right here. Um, I'll pick a preview from all this footage back here. So I'll pick about a 20 minute section, like you know, 10 to 30 minutes and I'll just you know look through the previews to get something I don't know exciting or a, a scenery shot that's really pretty like as I'm walking to the next area or something and I pick about 15 seconds out of that and just copy and paste it to the end copy paste okay so it's at the end now so I will go back and actually get the the end slate video that I've made which is just the it's just like a picture of where the videos go and then the music attached to it and if I could find it there we go this is the mist of Pandaria in slate I overlap it a minute or a second I overlap it for a second so once that's overlapped you can see here that it's just it's just the the template for where the videos go and this is how you do picture in picture first I take the clip that I'm going to use as a preview and I split it and the way you split it is you just select this file or this clip and hit the U button and that'll split the audio and the video and you're just going to select the audio track and delete it so then you just drag this to a whole new a whole new track yeah and then line it up with where it breaks and then make this even and the way you fade this so that it fades at the same time is that you just hover over the end of the clip in the corner until it says fade offset and then drag it to a second. So right now it'll look like, actually it's not even on the right track. This is supposed to be up here now. So now you'll see the preview but not the template. So the way you do picture in picture is you click on track motion for your preview clip. And then you're going to change what I do for this particular one uh, is just change it to a different resolution. And then not close the window that I'm supposed to be working in. Hold on. Total fail. And then you'll move it. This is how I do my insulate anyways. <laughs> Uh, then you'll just do it to the other two clips, uh, make sure it all runs together fine. And, ah, I knew there was something I was forgetting. Before before the project can be done, we have to do some color changes. Unfortunately, Fraps records a little bit darker than what your game settings are at, and then Vegas will render it even darker than that. So we kind of have to do some brightening up, uh, even though this probably, I don't know if this will look fine uh, on YouTube, um, but it looks fine in Vegas. Like, it would be... If, if, if this went straight to YouTube, it would look good. But unfortunately, it doesn't do that. It doesn't render right. So we have to do some color settings. And you can do this by clicking on the track uh, effects. But since I have, with the preview and everything, I'll have about four or five different tracks. So what's better for me is just to, like, control A to select all. Go to video effects. I have a custom brightening and contrast setting. Uh, this is what it is. Brightness 0.02, contrast negative 0.08, and contrast center 0.57. I put that on there twice. The reason I put that on there twice is because what I do is put a color corrector on it, and I put the Studio RBG to Computer RBG on it, and that'll just brighten up the colors just a little bit. But it does kind of, it darkens the darks a little bit too much, so I go ahead and put another brightness and contrast on it. I could probably just make a setting that is double my original settings and use that, but I'm too lazy to do that, so I just put it on there twice. That should be good, and now you render it. Uh, I've had problems with Sony Vegas rendering like black clips, like you can hear the audio, but the video is black, um, and I think 
the more tracks you have, the more often it happens. So what I do once I'm done with this uh, is I'll save it. Probably I will we'll have saved it along the way. Uh, so we'll just call this test video Pandaria or something. So it'll save. And then I hit new. And then I just open it back up again. I don't know why, but this helps. If it's a fresh track that if it's a fresh project that you haven't been working with, um, then it tends to mess up less. So I'll open it back up, make sure the end slate is still still working okay, and then you go into your render settings. And I render at I render into dot mp4s. So I think you can do dot wave do dot wave and I don't know there's <laughs> there's a lot of different video files that YouTube accepts but make sure make sure it's an acceptable YouTube file and and this is my custom rendering settings make sure your, your width and your height is the same resolution as your project settings so that way no no weird aspect ratio changes happen during the video frame rate I keep it at 30 uh, do none on progressive scan for field order aspect ratio one reference frames two uh, I do a constant bit rate of 14,000 uh, I think your video renders I don't know the variable bit rate people will tell you tell you to use I think it saves a little bit of space for the final video but it takes longer to render I'm, I'm not sure about that but I have plenty of space so I just do the constant bit rate and that's the bit rate that I use for audio uh, sample rate 48,000, bit rate 128,000. I forgot where I got these settings from, but this is just what I use. I've combined a bunch of different people's settings and just made my own for my personal usage. You don't really have to worry about 3D mode uh, <laughs> unless you're making 3D movies like on DVD or something. Uh, but for YouTube, you won't need that. And then I just do video rendering quality best. And that is my render settings. All you do is click save and it will render the video for you. I probably forgot to cover something. So if you have any questions about how I record or how I edit or about my computer setup or anything like that, please leave me a comment and I will get back to you on that. So this has been my PC setup video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye. The difference between the Black Widow Ultimate and the regular Black Widow is that the Black Widow Ultimate has the backlit keys. Oh god. Everything, everything is going wrong. Why does this randomly turn on? I don't understand. Stop it. Jesus. I guess I'm just gonna like, <laughs> just gonna like list off a bunch of random numbers and letters. Ow! Oh, everything is broken. Wait, let me get a drink. No! 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 Let me get a drink.